What's up everybody? This is the 2023 Honda Accord. So for the 11th generation of the Accord here, all new for this year, uh, I think it looks really nice. It's 2.7 inches longer than before. So it's a little bit more graceful and just elegant looking. I think as a result, it's a little grander and I think it looks really sleek. And so up front there, you have the sleek headlights. You have a nice larger grill there and a new design for everything here on the front end. And I just think it looks really good. It's very low, it has a you know, nice long nose to it here. You also have these 19 inch wheels that look really nice coming down to the side. And uh, up back, I think they did a great job on the styling as well. You have almost a full width taillight bar there. It just stops right at the Honda badge there. Nice and uh, sleek again. There's no pronounced exhaust tips or anything because although the styling might not be a bold change to some people for this new generation, uh, the powertrain shakeup certainly is. So now they're all hybrid aside from the bottom two trims, um, which have the carryover 2.5 liter turbo engine. Everything else is an upgraded enhanced version of the second generation of this hybrid system that you saw in uh, the previous generation. Accord and so that is on everything from the sport and up now and uh, so it means that they really have shuffled the offerings as far as what you can get for the Accord here and so this one we're looking at here is a touring trim the top trim so this does have that hybrid system so I'll go into all the changes on those hybrid you know components and how this drives compared to the previous generation. The interior of the 2023 Accord is really nice especially here for this fully loaded touring trim that we're in but all Accords in general are also really nice you have class leading space so much space and it's just so comfortable in so many different ways and I love this new interior design that we first saw in the new Civic then it's now moved over to the HRV the CRV and now the Accord here as well as the Pilot and probably everything else in the lineup eventually but anyway it looks really nice and it's just so just sophisticated and just kind of timeless almost with this the way they've hidden the air vents here with this single uh, mesh that goes across the whole dash there and just also just the materials here all feel really nice and high quality the way they like the buttons feel just all the materials Honda does a really good job especially in this newest generation especially it just feels so nice in here but anyway first thing sitting down in these seats these seats are also brand new redesigned and provide better comfort and better support and I love them these are the kind of seats that I would love to rotate trip in just drive for hours and hours because they're just so soft and comfortable just feel really really nice they're also heated and ventilated here in this touring trim the ventilation is only in the touring trim if you want the ventilation though I would just note that on one hot day that I was driving this they didn't do much it's not like it's blowing air-conditioned air on you or anything it's just a mild mild sensation doesn't do much so I personally don't think it's a must-have feature I love cooled seats in other vehicles but in this it just doesn't really do much unfortunately but that's my only complaint otherwise these seats are so nice moving on to the steering wheel here in the Accord it's the same great Honda wheel you get in many of the other uh, you know vehicles that feature it and um, I really like it the only problem with this wheel is there is no heating to it um, which is strange because basically every other competitor offers a heated steering wheel moving on to the gauges here one thing that is standard across the board is these 10.3 inch digital gauge clusters and so they look really great it's the same setup again in other new Hondas but if you're unfamiliar it's really customizable you know you have that right and left gauge pod having different features and different you know things you can put in there and uh, it just looks really nice and attractive and it just does a really good job you also here on the touring trim have a head-up display coming over to the center of the dashboard here one thing that is a massive improvement is this 12.3 inch touchscreen that you have here and so it's running this brand new uh, infotainment software it's really quick and snappy and here in the touring trim it also has the Google built-in functionality that is only on the touring trim you still get this screen on lower versions all hybrids get this screen so it's only the base LX and EX that go down to a 7 inch screen that has wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto this 12 inch screen is wireless for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is really nice as far as the Google built-in thing there's a few annoying pop-ups and, and extra little features that I'm personally not into if you're into the Google ecosystem you might really like it um, but one other downfall of this system though is there's no Sirius XM in any Accord for 2023 that I can see. I don't know if that's a supplier issue or what, uh, but for some reason uh, you lose satellite radio. So if that's something that's important to you, uh, you're going to have to go through CarPlay and run the app in order to use uh, the, you know those features. But um, aside from that, a really great screen. And honestly, it's one of the fastest responding screens. Whenever you're in Honda's built-in system, especially really quick and snappy, I love how you can also still have your little Honda sidebar there if you want while in CarPlay, or you can have without it. You can go either way. It's just really customizable you can customize all those tiles of course as well but I just really love this system and uh, yeah you know I could do without the Google thing but otherwise I mean it's really great and even with the Google thing still a fantastic system and it's also paired up to this 12 speaker Bose center point audio system here in this top touring trim unfortunately that's locked it out to just this uh, top touring trim and it sounds fantastic
fantastic though. So that would be one uh, tempting thing to go for, especially here for the Tourings. Uh, it is a really impressive surround sound experience. It really is much better than most of the competitors I'd say in this segment. Really one of the best areas uh, I think on offer here for a midsize sedan. And so anyway, very well done there. Coming down to the other stuff here, though, you have your basic climate control knobs, which are really nice. Now, they are a little loose. I do wish some of these things were a little tighter feeling. Uh, this could just be an early production one. But aside from that, though, nice and simple, and I love the design of it. You also have plenty of bins to store things. You also have this super soft center armrest. I mean, it is, like, pillowy soft and super plush. And you open that up, and you have a good amount of space and an extra power let in there, too. And you also even have padding down by your knees here which is great to see and is a nice improvement and something that I think the Ultima and maybe one or two others offers, but not everyone offers that. And so again, another extra little thing to make this feel a little plusher in here. The back seat in the Accord is fantastic as well. Again, being basically the biggest back seat in this segment, I think. I mean, I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself, I easily have, oh, I don't know, at least nine inches of legroom to spare back there, probably more. I mean, it's a ton of space, plenty of headroom. You can see even a forward facing car seat, you know, fits in there with plenty of room to spare and plenty of room here up front still even with that seat in that position and so i mean just so much space in here it's really really well done and on the touring trim here you also have heat for those outboard rear seats as well trunk is the same way it's a huge trunk same size as before but i mean that still is one of the best in the segment so very wide very long and pretty deep as well there's a few little tiny cubbies under the floor there but nothing much but I mean, overall, just that's the bottom line here with these new Accords and just even the previous generation Accord is they're all super comfortable, super spacious. But I think here for this newest generation, I love the new design and uh, the extra little bit of space you get as well. And just overall, a really nice place to be. But let's start up and go for a drive. The 2023 Accord has the new Honda key, which I love because it's this nice small key. Uh, it just has all the buttons you need on it there. It's, of course, keyless access, keyless entry, push button starts. So you don't even really need to mess with it, but it just doesn't take up any space in your pocket. I love how small this key is. I wish everyone would copy Honda. This is one of the best keys in the industry, in my opinion. But anyway, uh, like I said, keyless access, push button starts. Just leave the key in your pocket, hit the end and start button, and it turns right on. All right, so setting off here in the 2023 Accord. Well, the first thing you notice, especially here on the hybrids, of course, is that you can drive at low speeds fully on electric power. So, I mean, it's nice and quiet. All you hear is the humming from the pedestrian warning, you know, system that's mandated. But other than that, super quiet, serene, comfortable. And the electric motor is more powerful than before, too, for this new generation of the electric motors. And so, as a result, it means you have a little more oomph and you have a little more punch with that electric motors. You can do a little more electric driving than before. Still a tiny battery. Still doesn't have any range beyond, you know, uh, a few hundred feet or whatever, you know. But it still is, um, you know, just really nice to have that extra capability to, you know, be running on extended coasting and, you know, mild acceleration just under electric power is really great. And other things, though, that I noticed, um, it just bottom line it is so smooth and comfortable in all the ways the body's now stiffer and the ride just again in general has just been uh, retuned to be more smooth they've redesigned a lot of the suspension components to make it smoother as well and so the previous generation of Corb was already a very very nice car it's one of my favorites in the segment so um, this could only go up from there really and I'm just happy to report that it has gotten better it's even smoother more comfortable than before and I also love especially for this new generation how they've improved all the driver input stuff again not like that was bad in the previous generation but for this new one I just love how everything feels whether it's the turn signals or just the buttons uh, but also that goes down to like the brake feel is very consistent and throttle response is nice and immediate you know considering this doesn't have any kind of CVT really it's basically almost like a direct drive kind of system where the electric motor is doing a lot of the uh, driving for you there in uh, many cases and so um, although you do have a little bit of a CVT kind of drone whenever you accelerate sometimes even that's more hushed than before because the old Accord did make more racket than this engine does. They've quieted this engine down a little bit, even though it is still the same two liter nationally aspirated four cylinder engine. It actually is a little quieter than before. And just the more refined vehicle in general, like, like the whole body's been stiffened up. You have some extra reinforcements there by uh, your dashboard area and stuff. And so anyway, just all very impressive. But we're going to go ahead and go up into the sport driving mode. There's also an individual mode now. So if you want to have some things in sport mode and some things not in sport mode, you can do that as well. But anyway, put it into the sport mode here for max attack. And let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it does. Here we go. Very, very responsive. I think that actually sounds pretty good. 
and it moves itself pretty well too. So it's an improvement for sure. I think Car and Driver said it's about a half second faster for the zero to 60 compared to the previous generation hybrid. So you now have from this nationally aspirated, a two liter four cylinder engine along with two electric motors, you have a total of 204 horsepower and 247 pound feet of torque. And so that's two more horsepower than before, not much of an improvement, but the torque is up 15 pound feet, which is decent, you know, considering, I mean, 247 pound feet still in something that this only weighs 3,500 pounds, you know, that's pretty good performance and, you know, gives you a pretty punchy acceleration. Now it is still a long way off from the old two liter uh, turbo four cylinder engine used to get in the upper trims of the Accord. The old Touring, you know, had that turbo four cylinder. Now you can still get a turbo four, but it's just that base 1.5 liter turbo four. That does 192 horsepower, by the way, if you're curious, in that LX and EX trim. So this is certainly gonna feel faster, but it's not a massive improvement in power, at least as far as horsepower goes. Torque though is up, you know, like 60 or 70 pound feet compared to that base motor. So that is a good improvement for sure. And you do feel the electric motor come on a little earlier, and it's that's what's giving you, by the way, that full 247 pound-feet of torque is from that electric motor and its peak outputs. And so off the line, you really get a nice shove, and you can feel that it really kicks in. And again, this transmission is also programmed to be so nice and responsive, at least here in sport mode, that it's really giving me the power I wanted. And even whenever I was, you know, just driving along at slower speeds this week, it was really pretty good and responsive as well. But even in normal mode here, when you don't have the steering augmenting the sound it still sounds better for sure it's quieter but the tone is nicer than the old uh, gen accord so i definitely enjoy going full throttle on this they've also retuned the shift up programming so that it doesn't just sit pegged at the red line basically whenever you floor it like the previous generation did uh, it was kind of odd with the way the behavior was in that old uh, hybrid system um, for both the accord and for the crv but now for both crv and the new accord here i'm happy to report there's those normal shift points it feels a lot more natural and enjoyable to drive especially whenever you're driving it hard uh, than the previous generation. And now this road that we're on currently uh, generates a lot of road noise, a little bit of a rougher road. And you hear it, you know, it's not luxury car quiet, but it's also, I'd say very manageable and nice and hushed, you know, for the most part and very refined feeling still. So anyway, we're coming up some corners here that I always take and let's see how the Accord handles. We're still on just normal all season tires, nothing sporty or, you know, overly impressive really, but Honda still works their magic with everything just feeling so good. Uh, they said they improved the steering feel and uh, you can certainly feel that. You also have a 0.4 inch wider rear track and that combined with also, like I said, the stiffer body and the new suspension redesigns and all that, you know, really have helped to make this feel even better. And yeah, it really turns in nicely. I will say, I think that maybe the turn in felt a tiny bit quicker in the previous generation from my memory. But this seems like it's maybe smoothed out a tiny bit uh, just for your input so, you know, you're not uh, making it as dirty, you know, potentially. But um, I don't know. I just, it still feels really good. I still think it handles better than most of the other vehicles this competes against. Um, the Accord was always basically my favorite as far as the handling goes uh, in this segment. Um, and this continues to really be one of my favorites. I still really, really like it a lot. And um, yeah, I'd have to drive them all back to back, but I would say this is probably still one of my favorite feeling handlers, at least as far as comparable stuff goes. You, Whenever you go up to the stuff that has slightly sportier tires, like the Kia K5 GT now, and the uh, Sonata N-Line, some of those, you know, might be a little bit more exciting in the handling department. But I mean, just the fluidity and the way this thing flows through corners and the nicely weighted steering and just the smooth ride. Again, this isn't a sports car, so I'm not gonna review it like one, but what I can say is it just, you know, it just feels very comfortable. And also there's no lean or sloppiness to the ride or anything like that either. So even quick uh, corner here, pitching it in, and it's just so flat. So if you are an enthusiast, you'll appreciate the body control, but if you're not an enthusiast, you'll just appreciate that it's just undramatic. It just does everything you ask it to do without any kind of fuss or commotion, and it just does it all flawlessly. And I just, I mean, I think that's really impressive and commendable, honestly. And if you do happen to be an enthusiast and you want to get involved in the driving experience a little bit more here, the hybrids do have uh, these regen paddle shifters here. So um, you can go and, uh, you know, 
amp it up and uh, it'll do not quite a one pedal mode but it'll be pretty close and you have uh, various different stages you can go into um, to give you you know more or less regen so if you want to you know amp that up when you're going down a hill or something you can uh, but of course just feathering the brake pedal will also uh, charge that battery up and uh, you know give you some extra juice that way but yeah, it feels really quick. Again, it's not going to be the tire shredding hilarity of the old, you know, two-liter turbo motor. And I do miss that, especially they offer that with a manual for the first few years. But for the mainstream appeal of the Accord, this is going to be so much better. And now just merging onto the highway, it's impressive how much the electric motors do get involved because, like, I'm, I'm accelerating here. And the engine's not doing anything. That's all just electric boost that I'm getting there. And that's the power of this new generation of this hybrid system is that you have more power. They've improved those electric motors, not only for extra power, but also extra smoothness, extra ability to you know operate at different ranges. And it just, it all feels really good. And then of course you also do have it so that the engine can directly drive the wheels whenever you're up at higher highway speeds here as well. But I mean, the electric motor's doing most of the work here. And by the way, we're passing an 18-wheeler there. A little noisy, but honestly not bad. And uh, so up at some higher highway speeds here now. Still such a nice cruiser. This, oh man, yeah, they do such a good job with comfort in these Accords. I absolutely love the comfort factor in these. Just, oh, I would love to commute one of these things. It'd just be so, so relaxing and uh, enjoyable, honestly. But we're gonna go ahead and turn on the adaptive cruise control system here. Um, you do have the traffic jam assist here as a new thing um, that you get now in uh, some of the upper trims here. But Honda does a really great job of giving you a ton of standard safety technology uh, from blind spot monitoring to automatic emergency braking, rear cross traffic alert, uh, you know, adaptive cruise control, standard, all these things. And so we're gonna try out the uh, steering assist here after we pass this 18 wheeler and see how, uh, how it does. We are coming up to a gentle corner here now. So I'll let it do most of the steering here, see how it's doing. It's doing really well. The Honda sensing system is one of the better ones, typically in my experience. Um, but it's, I don't know, I feel like, so this, it still isn't quite as good at doing the lane centering as the previous generation Honda Sensing that I've experienced in the last gen for some reason. I'm not sure why, but this, this is, I think, the second vehicle I've experienced where, to me, it doesn't feel as confident as the first generation. I think they said they did make some changes to make it feel better in their opinion, but to me, it still is really good. I still say it's one of the more better ones out there and a little more reliable than some of the others, uh, especially Hyundai and Kia stuff can uh, sketch me out a little bit more than this one does. But going around this other gentle corner here now, and yeah, it's it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, we'll go down to a little bit of a lower speed here, see how it does with that. But I mean, it's, it's honestly doing a really good job. And unlike some other systems, I've never had one of these uh, Honda vehicles ever like cross over the line uh, aggressively or anything like that. So I think it's, it's doing a pretty good job here so far. Unfortunately, I don't have as much time to drive this vehicle this week as I would like to, to really test it even more. Other things here, so they did also improve uh, the cameras and the sensing abilities here of uh, the Accord. So it now has a wider field of view for both the uh, close term stuff and also for the far out stuff. It can see a lot better now, which is great. And uh, they've also improved some other stuff, like for example, this new ACE body structure that they have here for this new generation. Um, they say has been designed to interact better with larger vehicles, which is getting more and more important with everyone rushing into enormous SUVs and trucks these days. You know, someone in a sedan, like an Accord buyer, you know, it's really important that you have that better crash, uh, you know, safety. And that's something they focus on as well. And I have to commend Honda for even talking about crash structures and crash performance, because a lot of other companies gloss over it and just talk about oh look at all the technology we have but what if you know the technology doesn't save you you know Honda has also focused on the actual crash testing and making this vehicle you know very very safe if you do end up having you know something hit you so just another comforting thing I really value safety a lot and I'd love to see that Honda does as well and everything else works fine you know as far as all the other usual safety tech stuff that cruise control works great as far as you know spacing it out with other vehicles and slowing down speeding up naturally all those types of things you know it, it all feels really really good but anyway the last couple of things I mentioned here are 
describe the fuel economy and the pricing and how it compares to its competitors. So first off, as far as fuel economy goes, um, these are rated uh, for these top touring trims and any of these ones that have the 19 inch wheels. You get 46 MPG in the city, 41 on the highway, and 44 combined is what they're rated at here. And in my driving here, I haven't done a ton of driving. I've done about 60 miles or so, uh, so not a ton. Um, and it's mostly just around town, kind of suburban, you know, lower speed stuff for the most part. So what should be favoring, you know, the higher, you know, ratings there, I'm still only getting 37 MPG. Um, and so, you know, the trips that I was taking was also, they were also pretty short trips for the most part. So that also doesn't help a ton, but, um, you know, I was still expecting to see, you know, at least about 40 MPG or that's what I was hoping for, you know, at least, uh, cause I haven't been driving this hard. I've just been putting around all week doing errands and things like that. And, uh, just little around town things, but, uh, you know, 37 MPG, still really impressive for something with, you know, almost 250 pound feet of torque and all the luxury, all the comfort uh, and the large size of this vehicle. But if you are someone who wants to get the most fuel economy possible in your Accord Hybrid, uh, if you go for one of the trims that have the smaller wheels, you can get up to 51 MPG in the city. Um, and so that's very impressive because then you're approaching like Prius levels of efficiency there, um, you know, if you are okay, you know, living with those smaller wheels. And lastly, let's talk about pricing and how this compares to the competitors. These start at $28,390 including destination for an LX trim and for that price you still get fully digital gauges, adaptive cruise control and many other nice features. The cheapest hybrid is the Sport which starts at $33,000 and includes that 12.3 inch touchscreen. This top of the line touring trim is about $39,000 as tested and it's the only way that you get that Bose stereo, the head up display, front ventilated seats and heated rear seats. It'll come down to how badly you want those features, but I'd probably do without them and go for an EXL or a Sport L hybrid for about $4,000 less. As far as competitors go, the Accord is really well priced too. If you're looking for a hybrid, all the other mid-sized sedans will give you less power and they aren't much cheaper. The Sonata Hybrid is probably the strongest competitor with slightly better miles per gallon, a panoramic roof, and a few other things while still coming in about $1,500 cheaper for its top trim and still matching the Accord pretty well with all the other tech. Beyond that, the only other hybrid in this segment is the Camry, which is only about $750 cheaper, comparably equipped, and has much more dated tech, plus the whole vehicle really hasn't changed much since 2018. And regardless of the hybrid setup, the Accord is just the most comfortable, the most refined, and the most pleasant midsize sedan in this segment, and unless you want something faster and sportier like the Kia K5 GT, the Sonata N-Line, or the Camry TRD, the Accord continues to be my favorite midsize sedan, and I think one of the best values out there. But anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the 2023 Accord. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Huge thanks to Honda for providing me here with this Accord to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Please also leave a like, comment, and subscribe to keep these videos coming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.